Hello, my name is Dave Tamlow. I'm a Big Fix technical advisor based in Chicago, Illinois. Today, I want to take you through one of the main use cases of Big Fix compliance, the ability to create a custom checklist for auditing any aspects of a set of managed devices. The QR code on this, on this slide will take you to my LinkedIn page. If you have any questions about this presentation or if you need any additional information on Big Fix or Big Fix compliance, Feel free to scan the code and contact me on LinkedIn. Big Fix Compliance provides content focused on the security management aspects of maintaining your endpoints. We're going to look at configuration management, which provides the ability to leverage a very large set of customizable checks that come from sources like the Center for Internet Security, the U.S. Department of Defense's DSIS DIGS, and the U.S. Federal Government's Desktop Hardening Guidelines to build our own custom security audits applicable to our corporate or application standards. The basic process is this. You start by enabling any desired out-of-the-box audit checklists from the library provided by the compliance module. This loads the checks into the Big Fix server so that you can leverage them. From there, you build a custom checklist using a wizard provided by the compliance module. Once your checklist is built, you can tune the individual checks to match your internal audit requirements. Next, you apply the custom checklist to a set of target machines, which allows the machines to start automatically assessing themselves on a continual basis. Within minutes, you'll start to see the compliance posture for each machine against each of the checks in the checklist. Finally, remediation can be applied to the machines as needed to bring out of compliance elements back into line on either a one-time or continual basis. So let's begin. First, a security engineer would work with the master big fix operator to enable individual checklists out of the library of checks provided by the compliance module. As you can see here on the right side of the screen, there is a large set of CIS checks based on operating system or application content followed by similar checks for the DSIS digs and down below the patch content, USGCB checks. For our example, I've enabled a variety of Windows OS checks, including the CIS check for, checklist for Windows 10, so that they're already loaded into the Big Fix server and available for my use. Now I'll navigate down to security configuration and into configuration management where I can see the checklists that have been enabled in my server. I can go into the checklist tools and select create custom checklist so I can use the wizard to start building my checks. Creating a custom checklist involves making a copy of the individual checks I want to use for auditing and saving them to a custom storage area or site. This custom site in Big Fix compliance terms is my custom checklist. I'm going to call my checklist Passwords Windows 10 because I'm interested in auditing password attributes of my Windows 10 machines. So I start by selecting the CIS checklist for Windows 10 from the pull down list, which gives me a total of 425 different types of audit checks that I can work with. I'm interested just in password related settings, so I type enough of a unique string in the search box to bring up all of the audit checks related to password attributes, and there are 27 of them. I can select individual audit checks to work with, or if I want all 27 for this checklist, I simply click this box at the top, and it copies all 27 down to the bottom half of the screen. Whatever appears in the bottom half of the screen uh, represents the actual audit checks that are going to be put in the custom uh, checklist. Individual audit checks are designed to return a true or false value, meaning the endpoint is either compliant against a check or it's not. But if it's not compliant, the audit check itself doesn't tell me why it's not compliant. Is the element being audited not set? Is it set, but is it at a different value than their standard? The way to find out is to click this checkbox in the lower right hand corner to activate the measured valued analyses. What this does is to create a big fix analysis for each check that returns the actual value being audited. So the checks tell you whether the audit elements are compliant or not, 
and the associated analyses tell you what the values are so that you have the complete picture. Once your checklist is assembled, simply click the Create Checklist button and it will actually create the checklist for you. This usually takes a couple of minutes uh, to, for the system to complete. Once the checklist is created, notice that it brings me to the Computer Subscriptions tab, and by default, no computers are subscribed to this checklist. BigFix takes a restrictive permissions approach and doesn't activate or expose anything to endpoints until you as the operator are ready for that to occur. I want to tune some of my checks, so I'm not ready to expose this to my endpoint yet. Uh, we'll come back to this in a few minutes. But I can start looking at my custom checklist and uh, inspecting the individual audit checks and deciding which ones I want to tune. Now, to work with the individual checks, I highlight the fixlets and tasks section of my custom checklist and the individual checks are listed here in the upper half of the screen. Any checks that are tunable will have an editable, one or more editable fields in the description tab of the fixlet. Not every check may have um, the ability to be tuned, but for those that do, I'm going to be working with the description tab. So let's say that I want to work with enforcing password history to at least uh, 24 or more unique passwords. Let's say that for our corporate standard, we would have a corporate requirement of 36 passwords uh, before one can be reused. So I can change this desired value from 24 to 36. Now I want to show you something here before I do that. Uh, the description tab is what gives me all of the documentation about the check and any desired values that I might want to change. The details tab is where the actual code is written that does the actual audit checking. And in this case, I can see right here, uh, the audit value is currently set to 24. Now I go back to the description tab and I change my value from 24 to 36 and I click on save changes or save. And when I get the message that the save is complete, I can go back to the details tab and now in that same statement I see I'm auditing against my desired value of 36 rather than the default out of the box value of 24. So if there were any other uh, individual checks that I wanted to tune I could go through any of them and do the same thing. Once I'm done and I'm ready to expose this, I go back to the actual name of the custom checklist, go back to the computer subscriptions tab, and now I'm going to activate this checklist. And in this case, I'm going to do it by activating it against a um, computer group that I've already built elsewhere in the system. So I have a group called Windows 10 Devices. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subscribe any members of that group to this custom checklist. When I click on Save Changes, all of the endpoints in that group are going to be notified that there's new content for them to start uh, evaluating and reporting on. And within a few minutes, we will see results start to show up in this applicable computer count column. So once the endpoints are subscribed to the checklist and the results start to come back, I can see the results uh, in a couple of ways. If I look at the applicable computer count column, the number on the right tells me the number of endpoints currently evaluating this set of content. The number on the left tells me the number of those machines that are applicable to that piece of content. So I've got uh, some that aren't applicable to some of the individual checks, which means that they're compliant with them. I've got others where I've got one or more machines that are applicable, which means that they're out of compliance. If I want to focus just on the out of compliance machines, I can click on the Show Non-Relevant Content button, and that hides the ones that are compliant and lets me focus on the ones that need work. And then for any of those, I can simply take an action to remediate that out of compliance condition, either against the individual machine or apply it to the whole group so that if any other machines uh, report in later that they're not compliant, I don't have to come back and review this. 
I can fix them at the same time. I can also set this up by default. This is going to go out as a one-time action, but I could set it up as a policy to reapply whenever it becomes relevant again. And in that way, Big Fix, the agent and the endpoint will automatically enforce the compliance of this check on that endpoint. So even if somebody figures out a way to uh, change that setting out of band, when I deploy the remediation this way, Big Fix will just automatically bring it back into line. So that's a quick summary of how to build a custom checklist, uh, how to apply it to your endpoints, and also how to uh, fix any endpoints that may be out of compliance. Again, if you have any questions or need more information about uh, anything Big Fix related, please feel free to scan the QR code that was at the beginning of this presentation and contact me on LinkedIn. Thanks very much and have a great day.